All right, race fans. Welcome to Turn Left TV. Are you ready for some high speed action tonight? Step on the gas. All right, race fans. Welcome to Mid Ohio. This is Turn Left TV, and I'm your host, Heath Johnson. The High Octane Racing League GT3 Series heads to Mid Ohio for a little road course action. It's race number two in that 2020 GT3 Series season. And this track is challenging, man. I'll tell you what, you better be on the top of your game, but on top of the wheel, or this thing's going to reach out and bite you. Well, it's all live right here on Turn Love TV, boys and girls. Let's get it on. Some GT3 Series action headed your way, and uh, it's mid-Ohio, a perfect track for GT3 cars. Going to be a fun race today. Stay tuned, boys and girls. 50 minutes headed your way. All right, hey, thank you so much for coming in to uh, Turn Left TV. So right now, these guys are finishing up the, uh, the practice session. Just a short period of time left in practice before these guys go to a 20-minute qualification session. They can get as many laps as they want in uh, 20 minutes. We'll take a look at the track here at Mid Ohio, located in Lexington, Ohio. Uh, about 2.25 miles in length, 13 turns, and a very challenging road course, man. I think uh, for me, when I was out running this track, uh, my Achilles heel really are those uh, hills and turns at the crest of the hill. I really can't see which way I'm going here, so i got to slide off the track a few times. <laughs> but I think that's very challenging. I think all, most of the drivers are really consider this track a pretty challenging track. It's going to be a fun one. Always is here in the GT3 series in High Octane Racing League. Take a look at the uh, session results here. Colin Matiak, top time in the practice. 118.274. Very, very fast. Nikolai Bezrikov, second. Last week's winner. 118.675. Paul Brown, third. Dennis Vandeven, fourth. Artem Shuleyev in fifth. Jack G. Sixth, Will Dunbar, seventh, David Kerr, eighth, Dan Richter, ninth, Alexander Meshkov rounding out the top ten in practice. And again, this is Mid Ohio. I'm your commentator, your broadcaster, Heath Johnson. Round number two. No chicane version of uh, Mid Ohio, and uh, again, uh, just a little over uh, 2.2 and a quarter miles in length. 50 minute race here. Again, round two of eight. I want to thank you so much for coming in here and joining me on the YouTube channel. Peace to everybody out there. Hope everybody's behaving themselves. Hey, I kicked my green screen a little while ago, and now it's thrown it off there a little bit. But, hey, thank you so much for coming in and uh, joining me here on Turn Left TV. Always appreciate everybody being here. Got, hey, I got that bell behind me. Don't forget to smash the bell uh, right there. Uh, maybe just give it a little love tap there where you get updates when uh, races are going live and so forth. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, encourage you to do so. Share my videos with all your friends, and be sure to hit the thumbs up button. 
uh, to let me know how I'm doing here. Let me know you were here. If you'd like to make a donation to Turn Left TV, you can click on the link up in the banner of the channel and make a donation right through PayPal. So easy peasy. Again, thank you for coming in. Old Bezrikov having a little trouble there in the uh, qualified, uh, qualifying lap there, so he's going to have to uh, spend a little time there tightening a few things up and uh, getting back out on track. Take a look at that Colin Matiak here in that Corvette making his laps. Going to be one of those times here to look at. Uh, I th really think that uh, Colin's going to be very, very solid. It's a home track for him. And uh, yesterday he won the uh, the stock car race here at High Octane Racing League in the Bushwhacker Series, our Xfinity Series, and um, was really pretty excited about uh, today's race. Felt pretty confident about his chances of winning this race too. So uh, certainly one of those drivers we're going to be looking at through the course of the race here in that number 13 car. little sideways there on this green track. Take a look at David Kerr and that McLaren. Number 42. Speaking of the stock cars, don't forget next week we got Bristol Motor Speedway headed your way for race number 7. 10 race season, 150 laps from that uh, concrete high banked oval. Short track action best in the business on Friday nights no doubt about that that is a high octane racing league and uh, live right here on turn left TV racing starts at 9 p.m. Eastern time take a look at uh, Will Dunbar in his uh, 88 car Uh, Corvette, he's got a lot of practice laps in here, and I think he is realizing that, uh, you know, this is unlike stock cars. You know, you really got to get out of here, learn the track, get comfortable, get that seat time in. And uh, he's got that Salesforce Corvette here out in qualifications. Target time, 118.084. Take a look at John Stanley, another one of our uh, stock car uh, drivers doing some double duty here and uh, running some GT3 series, driving that Corvette, number 12. Take a look at the times here so far. Colin Matiak, uh, top time, 118.084. Paul Brown, second on the grid. Nikolai Bezrukov, last week's winner, shown third right now in the qualifications. Artem Shuleyev, uh, first race out here, shown in fourth on uh, on the grid here in the qualification session. And Dennis Vandeven rounding out the top five.
We'll take it the season standings after last week's race. Nikolai Bezrikov with that big win there. 52 points sits on top. Dennis Vandeven second in points. Jack G. That Team Redline uh, effort there, shown third on the grid. Dan Richter, fourth in points. Colin Matiak, fifth. You see Paul Brown, Will Dunbar, Alexander Meshkov, Lucas Sinfner, and David Kerr rounding out the top ten. Take a look at uh, Adder Pontes uh, in this uh, Mercedes AMG. Getting his qualification in. Only Mercedes driver out here today. Most of the guys are driving Corvettes. Of course, you have a lot of American drivers here, too. Drivers from the U.S. choosing to uh, run the Corvettes. Ern and Gio uh, running the Porsche. I think he's our only Porsche driver out here tonight. Racing from Argentina. A lot of good uh, South American drivers. And uh, Ernan likes to uh, do the uh, stock cars as well. If you're interested in some R Factor 2 server hosting, please give EliteHostingUSA.com a look. Three managed packages there for you. Self-managed packages there for you to choose from. And uh, that's where we uh, have our servers through. We have uh, three, uh, well, we got uh, two servers, actually, through these guys. Uh, but they do a great job, man. If you're interested in uh, renting a server, please look down in the link down in the description of this race and you'll find the link straight to uh, Elite Hosting. Take a look at uh, Paul Brown and his uh, qualification effort right now fourth on the grid. About 10, uh, just under 11 minutes left to go. Take a look at the side-by-side -side and make sure that's working. Looks like uh, we're good to go on that. And again, thank you for coming in. Joining me here on Turn Left TV. I want to say, uh, man, here's what I want to say. I want to say, let's um, scoot this a little bit more forward. There we go. Uh, I want to say, hey, thanks for coming in. If you'd like to get a hold of me, Discord, there are a couple addresses there. Uh, also, go down into the description of this race down below and uh, follow the uh, uh, Fanatec uh, link. Give those guys a look if you're interested in purchasing some uh, a wheel, pedals, uh, shifter. I've got the DD1 wheel, the uh, BMW GT2 wheelbase, uh, the shifter, of course, and then the V3 inverted pedals. The pedals are what started off for me, man. I bought the pedals, and I was like, wow, this, these are awesome. And I saved up my money and uh, purchased the rest of the equipment. And uh, I am not uh, not disappointed at all. I love it, man. I, I you know, uh, don't do as much sim racing as some of these guys, but when I do, man, uh, I tell you what, it is, it is great. Very, very realistic feel with the DD1 wheelbase. Uh, my wheelbase, actually, I got it uh, right off the bat. It actually has the DD2 motor in it, but it's a DD1 wheelbase. But... Uh, uh, nonetheless, fantastic 
Uh, no complaints at all. Absolutely love it. What a huge jump up for me from that G27 that I was using uh, before. So uh, not to say that was a bad wheel, but uh, there is just another level here when you get to uh, uh, direct drive wheels. But again, there's a link down there, affiliate link. If you'd like to uh, follow that, if you're interested in making a purchase, please use that link. That would help me out here at Turn Love TV. And then uh, also, if you want to join uh, High Octane Racing League, uh, there's the Discord address down there uh, below as well. And then, of course, the Elite Hosting USA. Uh, .com link in the description of this race. So thank you for coming in. Thanks for your support. And uh, hopefully we've got a good race here for you tonight. Take a look at uh, Nikolai Bezhukov, last week's winner. Right now shown second on the grid. One seventeen point eight two six. My heavens, man! That is a fast time there. So uh, can Nikolai crack into that in his BMW? Last week's winner, man. I tell you what, he had a really, really solid race. He led the whole race. Was dominant. And, uh, is that going to be the case here tonight? Take a look at uh, Dennis Vandeven. That's Sim Racing for Holland team, number 84 car. Right now shown fourth on the grid. Christmas, com Christmas coming up. Perfect place to get your comics, action figures, and games will be ZiaComics.com, your nerd headquarters. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. ZiaComics.com, your nerd headquarters. The Will Dunbar here, shown eighth on the grid in that uh, Corvette. Elite hosting Salesforce sponsor machine. The schedule coming up. Of course, tonight, Mid-Ohio. Next week, Salzburg Ring. And uh, I tell you, some of the guys that uh, had never been on that track, we were doing some testing there. Like, I absolutely love this track. It's going to be so much fun next week. On December the 19th, Watkins Glen after that. Another fun track uh, on December the 26th. Baku City Circuit coming up on January the 2nd. My, really my favorite uh, city circuit. I got two of my favorite tracks right in a row here. Baku City and then Olton Park International is my favorite road course. That's coming up on January the 9th. Riverside uh, on January the 19th. And then finishing out the season, the championship at Daytona Road Course on January the 23rd. Preston Hassel in here said, I got a root for the nephew. Got a uh, root for Will Dunbar. So uh, there's one fan. Will was saying to he sent the link out to uh, some of his friends and might have a few in here watching tonight. So uh, welcome. Appreciate uh, you being here to uh, check out your buddy. Take a look at Alexander Mashkov. And his BMW right now shown 12th on the grid.
So that tar tar target time, 117.696. My gosh, man. Guys are remarking already about how in the world is he doing that there. Colin Matiak with that top time. You know, uh, I will say this. It's been my experience, especially uh, at uh, road courses like this, not about that hot lapping. It's about uh, being able to string together uh, a bunch of uh, very, very good laps. Keep your car out of trouble. Good, Have a good solid pit stop. Uh, pit stops are you got to do a mandatory pit stop and change four tires. No, uh, no uh, rules really on compounds other than uh, not mixing compounds, but you got to change four tires in the pits if you do not. Uh, there will be a points deduction at the end of the race. So uh, Meshkov trying to get some uh, more laps in here. Now moves up to ninth on the grid with his time. 121.441. So about two minutes left to go here in qualifications. Well, who was last week's winner? Let me guess. Uh, let's see. Who do you think that was? That was Nikolai Bezrikov. He was dominant. Kept his car out of trouble. Got a big race win here at, uh, where were we last week? Lime Rock Park. Did the no chicane version, man, so it was just flat out. But he did a great job there. So congratulations to Nikolai Bezhikov on uh, getting that race win last week. Can he repeat this week? I'm going to have to find out. So uh, just under a minute left to go here in qualifications. Alexander Meshkov trying to push that car just a little bit, move up the grid. Take a look at that Jack G right now, shown fifth on the grid. Trying to get another uh, lap in here, get uh, move up the grid here just a little bit. Fifth, not a bad starting uh, position. You know, one of those guys that just seems to get in a lot of practice laps, man. Uh, comes tra each and every race prepared. I've seen him racing over at Sim Racing Mania. He and uh, Dennis Vandeven coming over from uh, Sim Racing Mania. So Jack J looks like he's going to start fifth on the grid here tonight. About this, Paul Brown hitting that uh, lap there toward the end. Congratulations to him, moving up to second on the grid. We'll take a look at the uh, qualification results. Colin Matiak there with that 117.553. Qualifies in P1. Paul Brown second. Nikolai Bezrikov starts in third position. Dennis Vandeman will start fourth. Jack G will start in the fifth position. Artem Shuleyev will start sixth. Erna Gio will start in the seventh position. Will Dunbar eighth. Alexander Meshkov ninth. And David Kerr will start in the tenth position. Dan Richter starts in the 11th spot. John Stanley, 12th. Adder Pontes starts in the 13th position tonight.
Guys in the warm-up session here right now in the driver's meeting, taking a few uh, instructions from the race admin. Don't forget, coming up next week, Bristol Motor Speedway, race number seven, the 2020 winter season. We had a heck of a race last night at Nashville Super Speedway in the Xfinity Series. So 150 laps here at Bristol, concrete high-banked oval, and it's going to be tight, man. Uh, short track racing at its best, Bristol. And uh, again, race number seven in that season. Expect a big field here. I think last night we had 15-ish guys. Uh, we've had up to 23 drivers out on the track. And it's going to be a good one. So Friday, December the 18th, coming at you at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, live right here on Turn Left TV, the High Octane Racing League Bushwhacker Series. All right, these guys are in the warm-up session. Getting their laps in. Bezrikov out early. Might have got a little spooked there when he saw he was third on the grid here. Yeah, he saw he was third on the grid there, and uh, he started in P1 last week, I believe, and uh, finished in P1. So maybe got a little spooked there. He's going to get out here and get some extra practice laps in.
All right, so we got about four minutes left in the warm-up session before we get this thing kicked off. Again, this is Mid-Ohio. Take a look at the track here again. Uh, just a little over two and a quarter mile in length, 13 turns, and a very challenging track. Very technical track. Much different than what we saw with Lime Rock last week. And it was just flat out, balls to the wall uh, racing here. And you're going to see that here too. But this is, man, this is race the track. There is no doubt about it. Race the track uh, type of track hitting you in the face here tonight at Mid-Ohio. Got to make sure you hit your marks, line yourself up for the turns. You're going to see a lot of turns here where you have the crest of the turn or the crest of the hill and then the turn. So kind of hard to see where that's going to go. And uh, just practice, man. It takes a lot of practice here to get good at this track. Don't forget the servers are hosted through EliteHostingUSA.com. Perfect for our factor too. We have great, great server management, great connections, and uh, big fields, man. We get a lot of guys coming in through the night. We got also uh, or through the uh, through the day as well. And I'll also say too, we got people connecting from all over the world. I know some of the guys here racing tonight are from South America. We've got some guys from Europe as well, and their connections look rock solid here. So, again, give uh, R Factor 2, or excuse me, EliteHostingUSA.com a look. Perfect for R Factor 2. That's EliteHostingUSA.com. Tell them Turn Left TV sent you. Well, it's really hard for me to uh, pick a winner here tonight, uh, but I I'm going to go with the uh, the guy who won last week. I'm going to say he's going to do two in a row here. This guy's Mr. Consistency, uh, and that's Nikolai Bezrikov. He comes out uh, early in the week, does some practice, gets uh, this thing tightened up and uh, ready to rock and roll. So uh, certainly Colin Matiak is uh, going to give him a run for his money. Don't forget about Paul Brown, Jack G. Also, those guys lightning fast too. But uh, my money right now is on... Uh, Nikolai Bezrikov to do the uh, twofer. Uh, we'll see if uh, he makes a liar out of me, though. No. Uh, so I'm not rooting for anybody in particular. We'll say that. Uh, but just going to put my pick in for who I think is going to win this race. So, hey, thanks so much for coming in to Turn Left TV. Peace to everybody out there uh, in uh, sim racing world. Uh, watching. Looks like I've got 10 people watching right now. So, again, thank you so much. Peace out there. And uh, thumbs up button. Let me know you were here. And uh, thanks for coming in. It's going to be a fun one tonight. Uh, very, very busy race here tonight. Uh, going to have to be up on the wheel. 13 drivers joining us, and I'm ready to go. Colin Matiak here getting the last few laps in here before time running out. About 30 seconds left here in the warm-up session. Again, mandatory pit stop, and you got to change four tires. No uh, rules other than mixing uh, compounds. Not allowed to mix compounds, so you can take softs, hards, mediums, uh, but you got to change four tires. Looks like Preston Hassel putting his pick in here. He says hoping Will Dunbar wins, but he's going to he's going to put his money down on Paul Brown uh, to win this race. All right, boys and girls, this is Mid Ohio, very technical track here, very very technical track. So it should be a fun one.
Take a look at the starting order here. Colin Maniac starts in P1 in that Corvette. Paul Brown in the Corvette starts in the uh, second position. Hey, man, you guys are going too fast here. Let's do this again. I don't know whatever that screen right there, initial one. Now, Paul Brown starts in the second position. Nikolai Bezhikov in the BMW starts in third. Dennis Vandeven starts in the fourth position in that Corvette. In fifth, Jack G. Now, 91 car, Artem Shuleyev starts in the sixth position. Ernan Gio in the 55 starts in seventh. Will Dunbar starts in the eighth position. In ninth is Alexander Meshkov. Starting in the 10th position is David Kerr. Dan Richter starting in the 11th position at McLaren. And John Stanley in the Corvette starting in the 12th position. And don't forget about Adder Pontes in the Mercedes starting in 13th. Rolling start here. A little challenge here getting through the uh, the track here under uh, yellow flag conditions, double wide. These guys kind of stagger it a little bit, uh, which is, I think, the smart thing to do until you get uh, pretty close to uh, the start-finish line or the start point, the starting zone. Right, they're going to start tightening up here. So this is a challenging starting uh, position here with uh, coming around and then being right on that front stretch to get that turn. So here we go, getting ready to go green. Go, go, go. All right, off the green. Round number two here from mid-Ohio. Colin Matiak there, the race leader. A little fight there for the second position. Paul Brown holding on to second. Nikolai Bezhikov in third. Take a look at Artem Shuleyev and that BMW here hounding uh, Jack G right now. On board here with Artem Shuleyev as uh, he's trying to pick up some spots here, running in the sixth position. Trying to outbreak him here down into the turn. Looks like he might have that spot. Oh, a little contact there with Dennis Vandeven. A little contact to Dennis Vandeven in the, uh, turn, uh, in the uh, fence. Oh, no. Early on here, a little rough driving. Uh, Jack G gets caught up in that as well. He spins. Hey, uh-oh. There's going to be a little uh, chat, I would say. Take a look at Arlem Shuleyev here. We'll take a look at this uh, replay. Arlem Shuleyev, uh, he and Jack G swapping a little paint right there, that Corvette, and then a uh, little contact right here on the bumper of uh, Dennis Vandeven or on the fender of Dennis Vandeven and those guys coming around then Jack G getting caught up and out as well. Look here if Dennis Vandeven just going to find himself getting turned right here. He's trying to hold on see him working that wheel and then a uh, little contact there. Not bad though uh, for him but a uh, little contact as uh, some guys slipping through. Jack G here watch this from his perspective and you see that uh, contact there just a little bit different angle uh, for those guys and uh, not in the room and uh, Artem Shuleyev and uh, Dennis Vandeven getting together and then you see uh, Jack G getting that car straightened back out. Meshkov here, he sees uh, chaos there. Oh, cr track opened up for him and then he was able to get around. So Jack G trying to recover here. A little bit of tough uh, break there for early on for him, but nonetheless, uh, he is going to uh, work on recovering. Right now, uh, Colin Matiak is the race leader. Nikolai Bezhikov up to P2 as uh, he's gotten around Paul Brown. 
So uh, Bezhikov uh, making that pass here. We'll take a look here. Bezhikov in the BMW here. Paul Brown goes wide in the turn and uh, a little bit into the grass and uh, leaves that opening uh, coming off uh, the final two turns there. And that S, uh, those S's there now coming down the straightaway. So Paul Brown now back to the third position. Nikolai Bezhikov up to uh, second Artem Shuliev here trying to bounce back. A little contact there with Dennis Vandeven. And uh, he's going to get around uh, John Stanley and take over the 10th position. John Stanley now back to uh, the 11th spot. Tell you what, man, Dennis Vandeven trying to climb back up the grid here. He's in 7th. And uh, he's working on, oh, he's working on Dan Richter. He gets a little bit squirrely there coming up the hill and, and that turn. So uh, Dan Richter holding on to that thing. But, man, I tell you what, that, that car got uh, absolutely... Caddy Wampus right there. Is that Dan Richter holding on and Dennis Vandeven pulling off that good clean pass right there. That's the way you do it. You set somebody up there, take advantage when the hole opens up. And uh, Dennis Vandeven, one of the best in the business. Respect to that. Uh, very the clean, clean driver here. We'll take a look at Dennis Vandeven in his uh, 84 car as he's now working on Will Dunbar out of the front of Dennis Vandeven's machine at uh, Will Dunbar here. And he's trying to bounce back. I don't think he really has much damage there. It's just, uh, you know, throwing you out of your rhythm here. And now you uh, find yourself behind the eight ball there just a little bit uh, with respect to uh, position. Got a little work to do for Dennis Vandeven. So take a look at Dan Richter here in this McLaren. Trying to bounce back here after getting a little squirrely there and uh, losing a position. He is now running in the eighth spot in that McLaren. John Stanley here in this uh, Corvette. Oh, he gets off track there just a little bit. Oh, he's in the grass and uh, can't get any uh, traction there, and he comes around. Going to end up giving up a spot. So uh, John Stanley coming around there and uh, losing a position or two. Artem Shuleyev and uh, David Kerr battling it out here. So McLaren versus BMW, and that uh, BMW there of Artem Shuleyev uh, now makes that pass and picks up the ninth position. David Kerr now back to 10th. Outer Pontes uh, trying to make a pass here as uh, Jack G goes around. So Jack G having a little trouble there as uh, Pontes gets a bye. So not, so, not sure what happened here. This is uh, Jack G just a little bit over, earlier. And he just misses that turn just a little bit and uh, loses the back end as you see uh, Adder goes by and uh, picks up that spot. Dennis Vandeven now closing in here on uh, Will Dunbar, going to outbreak him in this turn, and uh, he's got that preferred position. A little muscle there and uh, gets around. So now Dennis Vandeven continuing to rebound here. He's in the sixth position as uh, Will Dunbar back to seventh. Take a look at Alexander Meshkov. You're running in the uh, fifth position. Good night here for him. Good top five run in that number 57 car. What a paint scheme, man. That's a great looking paint scheme right there. Colors just uh, pop, don't they? Good design on that car. And uh, he's done a lot of work there. Looks, looks great. Alexander does a lot of his own streaming too. Uh, I think he uh, does some uh, VEC stuff. And, uh, oh, get that car a little sideways there around the turn. He's starting to look at a little mirror driving maybe as uh, Dennis Vandeven closing in. Looking out of the back of uh, Alexander Mashkoff's machine. He's there. There's Dennis Vandeven right there. I don't see a Turn Left TV logo on that, Dennis. Going to have to have a chat there. Maybe I'll have to send him a little bit more money. That or send out the goons. As uh, Meshkov hold on to that spot, but Dennis Vandeman uh, obviously a little bit quicker right now and uh, all over the back of him. Up here with our race leader, and Colin Matiak comes off track. He's having a little trouble there, so Colin coming off track. Hunter Pontes has uh, retired his machine. He came down pit lane here. It looks like he's retired his machine. Let's we'll see what happened here with uh, Colin. He doesn't come around, but he just uh, 
Man, he just gets off track right there. He missed that turn. That thing got a little sideways on him. He got that thing straightened back up. Doesn't lose any positions, but I'll tell you what, it is tightened up. Nikolai Bezhrikov is all over the back of him now. Closing in on Colin Mattia. Colin there gathering his thoughts and uh, extending now that lead back to eight tenths. See uh, Paul Brown in this mix too. How about Ernan Geo here in this uh, Porsche? He's having a great night here, running in the fourth position. Got that Milka sponsor on the side. About that, huh? Does a great job. Uh, got the uh, the old uh, name, uh, the number plate on there. GT3 uh, Elite Hosting USA number plate. We're looking for a Turn Left TV logo. I don't see it anywhere. Another guy we're going to have to send out the goons on. So our only Porsche driver here running in the fourth position. Good night here for him so far. Look at this. We got a gaggle of cars now as... Uh, Dan Richter here trying to get around. Uh, he got around Artem Shuleyev, and uh, those guys battling pretty solidly. Uh, Artem in that uh, BMW. Dan Richter now picking up that spot, working on the back of uh, Will Dunbar here. We'll take a look at this pass. Look at side-by-side -side racing there between the BMW and the McLaren. So Artem Shuleyev in that BMW there, and uh, although not preferred position for Richter, he uses the outside wide entry to that turn and then sets himself up for the next turn, so he has gained that spot. Good job for Dan Richter. Uh, now moving up to the 8th position, Artem Shuleyev now back to ninth. Will Dunbar here uh, finding himself in a little bit of traffic. He's running that 7th position. Dan Richter behind him. And that Salesforce sponsored uh, Corvette here having a good night. Right now, running in seventh. Got a lot of practice laps in here. Well, he was fired up about this race. Look at that, man. I'll tell you what, uh, Meshkov here having some trouble, and uh, Dunbar closing in. I told him just to race this track, man. I'll tell you what, that, uh, that battle behind him, heating up here. We'll take a look out of the back of his machine. Maybe. There we go. Oh, we got that turn left TV logo wrong way. He's a, oh, Shuleyev there. He is driving the wheels off that thing. Shuleyev makes that pass, but I'll tell you what, he was hanging on. My heavens, man. He and Dan Richter are having a battle here. Look at, look at this, man. Shuleyev, Richter side by side uh, racing here through the turns. Richter in that uh, McLaren tight race, and Shuleyev in that BMW. Oh, contact right there. That's what happened, man. I think Dan Richter kind of had enough of that, and uh, Dan Richter gave him a little bit of a shot. Artem Shuleyev uh, pulls out that pass here. We'll take a look at this again. Look at this. I don't know if Dan uh, really liked being rubbed on right there. And then uh, watch this. They come down over the hill, and Richter is going to maybe, I don't know if it's a timing issue or what right there, and he's going to get into the back of that BMW. He might lift the back end of that thing off the ground. And uh, Shuleyev did a great job of hanging on to that thing. My heavens, man. We're going to go on board here with Shuleyev as he's going to take a shot. Uh, coming up over the crest of this hill in this turn. Watch this, man. He's going to work this uh, work this steering wheel right there. And he is counter-steering. He does a great job of hanging on to that. Uh, but I tell you what, I think there might be some uh, there might be some communication between the two of those guys after the race. Take a look at uh, Jack G getting around David Kerr. Now David Kerr comes off track. See uh, what happened to David. It's a little bit hot there coming in, and that McLaren, and he gets in the grass, and uh, now just trying to get this thing back on track. He loses a position, now back to the 11th spot. Shuliev now working on this other BMW here. This is uh, two BMWs here battling it out. He's roughing him up right there. Shuliev roughing him up and uh, making some room as uh, Mashkov giving him some room. Dan Richter kind of slipped by as well. So Dan Richter gets around Meshkov as Adam Shuleyev also made that pass. 
See so they were on board here with Shulev again. He's going to rough uh, Meshkov up a little bit. As that Dan Richter takes that opportunity of Meshkov, they're trying to uh, gather his thoughts, and he picks up that spot. Take a look at that Dennis Vandevin here running in the fifth position. He has really bounced back from that earlier incident there uh, with uh, Artem Shuleyev and now finds himself in the fifth position. He's got a little work to do. There's no doubt about that, but uh, having a pretty good night now in the top five. Uh, he's about 22, almost 23 seconds back, but nonetheless still solid night here. The battle, I think, right now is up front, and that is... Uh, Nikolai Bezhikov and Paul Brown, these guys pretty tight together here. This is P2, P3. A little bit further apart than what I thought, about 1.5 seconds, but a uh, good tight grid here. Matiak, Bezhikov, Brown, one through three there within uh, four seconds of one another. Geo, uh, Ernan Geo running in the fourth position. And that uh, Porsche you know, having a good quiet night. He is nothing but business, man. I mean, he doesn't say much. Uh, on the radio really any time and definitely not during the race. He just uh, focused, does a great job, and not only the stock cars, but now out here in these uh, GT3 cars. Paul Brown here r running in that third position. He gets that car a little bit wide right there. Oh, he misses that turn just a little bit, spins. He's going to have to uh, try to get this thing straightened back up. So off the track, and uh, what's he going to do? Get this car straightened back up. Long race here. you got 35 minutes left to go to recover. Uh, but nonetheless, good news for him is he does not get in into anything. So no damage there. But Hernan Gio going to try to make this pass on uh, Paul Brown. As, uh, Paul Brown's trying to uh, gather his thoughts. And uh, Hernan Gio uh, gets by in that Porsche. Artem Shuleyev now catching up to Will Dunbar. Dunbar in that Corvette. He gets a little bit wide right there. Oh, contact! contact there as uh, Will Dunbar does a great job of hanging on, but there might have been some contact. Watch this. Uh, Dunbar hanging on to this thing, but uh, there's going to be some contact right here as he slips through, and uh, Shuliev, he has got that car all beat up now, some of which is his own cr uh, creation and uh, his own doing, and others like that, victim of circumstance. So Dunbar now Trying to hang on here after uh, almost spinning that car. Dan Richter all over the back of him. Mezhikov here running in that second position. We do have that pass now. Dan Richter getting around uh, the 88. So Dan Richter down the front stretch here. Going to have preferred position here on uh, the 88 car and takes that spot. So... Will Dunbar now falling back to the eighth position. He's going to have uh, more uh, company here as Jack G bouncing back here. Take a look out of that side of uh, Dan Richter's McLaren, and you can see that battle back there with a uh, couple Corvettes. That is a gaggle of cars right there. Is that uh, Jack G looking to make this pass, uh, setting uh, the... 88 up for the pass. A Jack G getting around that 91 car and picking up the uh, eighth position. Artem Shuleyev here in this BMW. Oh, he misses that turn. Shuleyev, can he hold on? Oh, he spins. Shuleyev spins. And he's going to give up the sixth position, it looks like. He's going to lose some spots here as these guys going back by. He's trying to get this car gathered back up. So Shuleyev has some more work to do. Colin Matiak here, our race leader.
So uh, Matiak here, pretty comfortable lead right now on these guys as they've been racing pretty hard. Bezrikov seven and a half seconds back. Paul Brown now 22 seconds back with that spin. Uh, good news for him is he doesn't get in to do anything, so he is going to have a chance to try to work his way back up there. But uh, he's got some work come up, uh, uh, you know, in front of him, that's for sure. Definitely work cut out for him. Look at that, Sergey Butsev uh, in here. He should be out there on the track. I know uh, he ran some uh, Indy cars with us. Look at that, Cliff Welling uh, and also Paul Holt joining us. Joe Haynes also mostly interested in how the broadcast overlay looks and is working, working fine. A lot of work on uh, getting it to look the way you want, that's for sure. But uh, nonetheless, working just fine. So good to see uh, Sergey in here, uh, Paul Holt and Cliff. Uh, Always good to see those guys. Take a look at Nikolai Bezhikov. He's had a uh, just one little hiccup in the race. Yeah, you know, kind of had himself uh, behind the eight ball after that, and uh, had to work his way back up to the second position. Uh, but nonetheless, in second right now, 7.8 seconds back. A battle back there for third. Paul Brown has. Oh, I tell you what, did uh, Bezhikov come off track? Look like he might have. Paul Brown uh, running in the third spot. And back there for fourth, Ernan Gio and Dennis Vandeven battling it out here. So little Corvette versus Porsche. Sergey said he's a Porsche fan, so there's our Porsche. One Porsche in the uh, on the grid. Paul Holt uh, rooting for Dennis. No shock there, I don't think. Some of those Sim Racing Mania guys here joining in the chat as well. So you see uh, Dennis Vandeman really uh, trying to get his way, uh, find a way to get around this Porsche. A little bit better off the turn there for the Porsche. Vernon Geo holding on to the fourth position. Dennis Vandeven in fifth. Oh, he misses that turn right there. Maybe he thought he was. On, maybe he knew he was on TV. Misses that turn and uh, now falling back to the fifth position as Dennis Vandeven was waiting to pounce. On board here with Dennis Vandeven. You watch this uh, that Porsche. He's going to miss the turn. Just out. Just not break very well in that turn. And Dennis Vanderman clean through that turn and uh, pulls off that pass, moving up to the fourth position. David Kerr here in this uh, McLaren, this 42 car. Gets off track there a little bit, keeps the thing pointed in the right direction. That's good news for him. Uh, but, uh, man, he is really driving that on the edge. David Kerr right now running in the 11th spot. Artem Shuliev, he is trying to bounce back here now after spinning a little bit, trying to gain some positions. He's uh, closing in on uh, Dan Richter. Dan Richter's like, man, uh, you know, I pass you, you pass me back, I pass you, you pass me back. These guys have been swapping positions. Take a look at uh, John Stanley here in that Corvette as uh, he let the uh, lead lap car go by. So he's running in the 12th position. Again, one of those guys uh, who does a lot of stock car racing said, I want to give this a shot. And he comes out here, uh, second race out here in the GT3 series. And this is one of these uh, things that's really uh, acquired taste. GT3 cars. I love GT3 racing. Uh, it's just awesome. I mean, there's a few things I probably change as far as rules are concerned. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. It's still fun to watch. Adder Pontes uh, joining us in the uh, chat here. He said, is my paddle locked in second gear? Oh, my gosh. So that's unfortunate. He's going to have that DNF. So I wasn't sure what happened. I looked in the uh, in the pits there. 
and he was just setting in his pits and then uh, ended up retiring his machine and wasn't sure what had uh, transpired there to uh, lead himself to go there but he said his uh, paddle locked in second gear that stinks Sorry for your luck, but glad you came out to join us, and hopefully you're going to be here next week as well. Always welcome. So it looks like, uh, oh, I'm not hearing anything out of this car. This is Paul Brown. He's running out of fuel here. He's on, out of fuel on pit lane, so can he coast to his pit stall? That's the question. So Paul Brown making a pit stop. Can he make it to his pit stall? He's out of fuel. Looks like he's got a pretty good uh, head of steam there, so to speak. And uh, he's going to be okay. Take a look uh, as uh, Paul Brown making that pit stop there. as we take a look at our race leader, and that is uh, Colin Matiak. Nikolai Bezrakoff second, Dennis Vandeven third, Ernan Geo is fourth, so Dennis got around the Ernan after uh, he had that little trouble there, a little bobble through the turn. Colin Matiak has not been uh, mistake-free. He's made a, uh, you know, he missed a turn there, but he had enough lead to really give himself a cushion. So Paul Brown here changing those tires and uh, taking fuel. Four tire stop is mandatory. As uh, Paul Brown now coming back out on track. Artem Shuleyev and uh, Will Dunbar here battling it out. Artem uh, trying to bounce back here now up to the sixth position as uh, Artem Shuleyev, excuse me, up to the seventh position. Artem Shuleyev uh, makes that pass. Will Dunbar back to eighth. Artem, uh, he, he moves up the grid, he gets in a little bit of a scrape there once in a while and uh, falls back and then has to work his way back. So take a look at David Kerr here running in 10th. 24 minutes left to go in the race and uh, just past halfway. Is McLaren right now running in 10th. He is the last car on the lead lap. Dennis Vandeven coming down pit lane. So Dennis Vandeven making a pit stop here with uh, just under 24 minutes left to go. Again, pit stops here long. Take a long time. Kolomadiak here not yet pitted. Vandeven on pit lane now back to 10th. Probably going to end up losing a few more spots here as uh, maybe not to Paul Brown since Paul has uh, pitted. David Kerr indicating he's going to be coming down pit lane this time by as well. So Dennis Vandeven on pit lane, finishing up that pit stop here, now coming back out on track. Dan Richter and uh, Will Dunbar here getting after it. Dan Richter squeezing through as uh, Will Dunbar gives him a little bit of a, a little room there to move, to breathe, and... Uh, Now falls back to the eighth position as Dan Richter in seventh.
Shuleyev now closing in on Bezrikov. We saw those guys uh, getting after it here. Now Shuleyev closing in or uh, coming down pit lane. So Shuleyev on pit lane. David Kerr on pit lane. Dan Richter continuing to move up the grid here as these guys making pit stops. Now shown in the fifth position. Colin Matiak here with just under 22 minutes to go is the race leader, and he's got a pretty comfortable lead, almost a 10-second lead over Nikolai Bezrikov. Now, I would have said that, uh, you know, he would probably have been the favorite to win that race last week, I think, in the long run. But um, really what I saw was, uh, you know, some mistakes there, and Bezrikov uh, did not make any mistakes, really. He had a pretty clean race. Uh, last week at Lime Rock. Take a look at Bezrikov here running in that BMW in the second position. That 23 car. Dan Richter coming down pit lane. Uh, I believe Will Dunbar still out there on the track here. Dan Richter in that McLaren taking some service. And I'm getting some word that maybe our race leader, Colin Matiak, is going to be coming down pit lane this time by. Alexander Meshkov indicating he's going to be coming down pit lane, too, in this BMW. What a great pace scheme, man. That guy has done a great job with that scheme. So Dan Richter, John Stanley, uh, Meshkov going to be coming down pit lane. Uh, Colin Matiak indicating he's coming down pit lane. Here's our race leader, that 13 car. Does a good job painting cars, too. He's a pretty good painter. Does his own schemes, and they all look really pretty uh, popping. He's got some really cool ones in the uh, stock car series and uh, does a great job. Uh, he swings a little bit wide there on that turn. Uh, and that's suppose he's coming down pit lane here. So pit road speed is 50. Definitely want to use that speed limiter as Colin Matiak. Limping down pit lane here. Getting into that first pit stall. You see some of our other drivers here on pit lane. John Stanley coming back out on track. Nikolai Bezrikov on pit lane as well. You see Alexander Meshkov on pit lane. Gio here said he's going to be coming down pit lane, but he gets wide. Oh, man, Gio it didn't just indicated that he's going to be pitting, and then he smacks the wall. He gets wide there and then comes off track through the grass and makes a pit stop. Now his uh, pit crew is going to have some extra work to do here. Let's take a look here. He gets a little bit wide. Uh, almost two pit entrance and then smacks the wall in the uh, in the grass and smacks that wall. So uh, he has got uh, some damage on that car. He's going to have to get repaired. So he his pit crew is having a chat with him right now, and he is livid, apologetic to his pit crew. So he's uh, taking service here as uh, Colin Matia comes back out on track and is the race leader. Nikolai Bezrikov here has uh, tightened it up a little bit here. So you see Bezrikov right there just behind. So that uh, battle... Has tightened up. Bezrikov uh, just three and a half seconds back. 
Dennis Vandeven shown in third. Geo uh, in fourth on pit lane. Will Dunbar on pit lane in the uh, fifth position. Paul Brown in sixth. Now Paul Brown moving up there as he gets around. He and uh, Jack G here having a battle here. A couple of uh, Corvettes battling it out. Jack G. Tell you what, man. Jack G does a lot of GT3 series racing, so not sure Paul knows that, but I'm not saying that's an unfair advantage because Paul Brown can drive just anything. This guy is a fantastic driver. But uh, Jack G, getting a lot of experience here in these uh, GT3 cars. I'm going to say it is, uh, it's an even matchup. How about that? I'm going to keep it neutral. I'll say that the uh, Paul Brown is faster through the turns and uh, Jack G is faster in the straights. Paul Brown is faster turning left. Jack G faster turning right. You get the point. So good. This is the best battle on the track right now between these two. Take a look at this side-by-side -side view here. Is that Jack G? We're focused on him, and we're looking at his in-car and uh, that track-side view. As he is trying to make some inroads here. Paul Brown there kind of uh, walking away just a little bit. John Stanley here in this Corvette, he's had some trouble. Now he gets a little bit wide there, gets that car in the grass, and it spins this car around. Good news is nothing uh, damaged on that machine. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, hurt feelings, but that's about it. So John having the, an eventful night here, that's for sure. David Kerr in the 42, and this McLaren here uh, making some inroads. David Kerr up to the ninth position. Will Dunbar. In the 88. Oh, a little bit too hot right there for Will. And that 88 car, he spins, uh, gets the car pointed where it needs to go and back out on track. So doesn't lose any positions, but uh, definitely going to throw off your rhythm. So Will Dunbar spinning that car uh, on the tail end of this track and now has to try to find a rhythm here. Take a look at Alexander Meshkov running in the seventh position. Again, having a quiet night. Alexander's always really quiet on the radio. Nothing but business. Always uh, laser focused. This BMW right now running in the seventh spot. You've got to be laser focused on this track. Cannot let your eye uh, take your eye off the A ball at all. Dennis Vandeven uh, climbing up the grid here. He is in the third spot now. In that 51 car. So he's having a good night. Running in P3. Remember uh, the contact there earlier in the race with he and Artem Shuleyev. Shuleyev now finds himself back in the sixth position. And this is a guy that really has you know, kind of gotten himself in a little bit of a pickle there behind the eight ball after making contact. And then had to play catch up, had to pass those cars and had a little bit more issue, lost those positions and then had to try to reclaim those positions. So he's been sort of a uh, two steps forward, one step back type uh, racing here tonight. 
Ernan Geo here in the Porsche. Trying to get around David Kerr in that McLaren. So good battle right there as uh, Ernan Geo gets by. Now takes over the fifth position, or excuse me, the ninth position is David Kerr falling back to 10th. Meshkov here getting in a little bit hot. There's that crest and that turn at the same time. He gets off track. Oh, man, I thought he was going to be okay. Gets on that curb and it spins that car around. Grabs onto the wheels and spins that car around. And you see uh, our race leader going by. So my heavens, man. The late race shenanigans. So Nikolai Bezhikov here running in the uh, second position. He is uh, four and a half seconds down, to, uh, just a little over four and a half seconds down to the race leader, Colin Matiak. Can Colin Matiak win the stock car race and then come back the next day and win this GT3 race? Right now it's looking pretty solid in his favor. Meshkov here trying to bounce back. He spun that car and uh, now trying to pick up a spot here. Looks like he might have done that as uh, David Kerr coming off track. Meshkov's going to get around. So Meshkov now picking up a spot here. Bezhikov trying to get around that lap car. He does. He takes that position. So uh, Bezhikov in second, trying to work his way back up to the leader. He's 4.8 seconds down. Dennis Vandeven in the Corvette here looking pretty solid, running into third position. Sim Racing Mania driver. Got a cool car, really. Uh, nice looking paint scheme. Just uh, simple. Fair Racing Team Corvette, number 84. Looking good here, running in the third spot. Paul Brown ha has had a pretty eventful night. He's running in fourth, but I'll tell you what, this is the battle on the track is that Jack G, Paul Brown, Jack G and PB <laughs> racing it out. Paul Brown in the uh, Valvoline sponsor machine. Jack G running in that... Uh, Fanatec sponsored machine. That is fourth and fifth. Now I have a feeling this battle is going to get even tighter as we start winding down the uh, time here. We're almost to uh, nine minutes left to go. And you can go back here looking at that Side-by-side -side view is Paul Brown running in the fourth position on board here with Jack G. Just taking a look ahead at Paul Brown. Jack G uh, trying to outbreak him, trying to get a good run, good grip, good bite there coming off the turns. Not quite as smooth through that S area there as uh, Paul opens up that uh, lead just a little bit. And he gets off track right there. Now he's going to have to play catch up. Oh, and he comes around. He comes around. Jack G comes around there. And uh, that is not what you want here late in the race. So Jack G gets off track. And I think, you know, it all started with missing that turn just a little bit. Those S's. He was quite smooth through those S's. And then he was sort of got himself... Trying to play catch up, losing some concentration, gets up on the crest of this hill, and then of course it's a turn as well, and uh, spins, and then now trying to get that car back out on track, so he doesn't lose any more or any positions. He's lost some time, but he does not want to lose any positions here. Artem Shuleyev would be the next car in line. He's running in the sixth spot, so a pretty good little gap there, about seven seconds between the two of those guys, uh, but. Uh, 
Jack G definitely wanted to, didn't want to see that. He's going to have to uh, thank his lucky stars there, though, and didn't lose any positions. And see Paul Brown here running in fourth. Paul, you know, it sort of says, hey, I just want to see top five finishes here. You know, he realizes that uh, GT3 cars, you know, you know, this is really not his forte, uh, but he wants to show that he can drive these cars and get a good top five finish. And so far doing just that, he's in fourth. Will Dunbar's had some trouble there. He is now running in the 11th position. Uh, and he's hoping that some of these guys are going to have to come down pit lane here maybe uh, in this 88 car. Had a pretty eventful night. Getting better all the time. He's really very new to sim racing. Uh, I said I shouldn't say new, but back into it. Uh, completely different sim from uh, when uh, he used to race years and years ago. So you got to be uh, a little sympathetic to uh, how, you know, really how much uh, progress he's made in a short amount of time. Colin Matiak here with six minutes left to go. The race leader, he's got a five-second lead over Bezhukov. Bezhukov has uh, really kind of kept him close. And all he needs is uh, Matiak here maybe to have a little trouble with some lap traffic and maybe, just maybe, uh, missing a few turns here, having some challenges with the track. And that will tighten that back up. Bezhukov running in the second position in the BMW. There comes uh, Nikolai Bezhikov in that BMW. On board here with uh, Colin Matiak hitting his marks. Something about this kid, man. He's 16 years old. There's just something about him. Uh, he is just sim racing in his blood. He loves to do this stuff, and uh, he is good. He knows how to set up a car. He knows how to uh, drive tracks. He knows the intricacies of each and every track he uh, faces. And, uh, you know, the other thing, too, you got to add on to that. He's got that uh, fearlessness uh, that a, uh, one of those teenagers has uh, that we seem to lose when we get old. All right, Gio in the... Uh, Porsche here and Dan Richter battling it out. Dan Richter and that McLaren. Ernan Gio and the Porsche now going to pick up that spot. So Ernan now moves up to the seventh position as Dan Richter back to eighth. So good battle there. Ernan, uh, again, good stock car racer. Comes from Argentina. And he has got a battle still with Dan Richter on his hands. Dan Richter does not want to give up that spot. Let him get away from him. So Dan Richter is going to try everything he can to uh, get back to him. On board here with Dan Richter. Is he going to try to get that spot back? See how he uh, enters that turn just a little bit differently than uh, Porsche. Porsche seems to be a little bit better at cornering. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty good speed here. So each and all, every track here is just going to have a different advantages and disadvantages for the cars, the different makes. That's why we're so insistent, by the way, that if uh, whatever car you start with is uh, the brand that you have to finish with, you can't. Uh, change um, makes and models of cars uh, in, in the series. So we got to stay with what you uh, started the series with. We're in Gio now starting to open up that gap. As a time running down here, three and a half minutes left to go. Kalamadiak leading. Bezhikov in second at 4.5 seconds. Bezhikov is closing in, but he's going to run out of time here. He is going to have to uh, have a little bit of luck here to close that 4.5 second gap, but uh, it is tightening up. We'll take, a look at, we'll take a look at that uh, 1v1 battle there with he and uh, Bezhikov. 4.3 seconds right now. See how that changes from one sector to the next. 4.5, so Matiak a little faster in that last sector.
So 4.7 seconds now. So uh, extending that just a little bit. We'll go back here and look at that second place car of uh, Bezhrikov. Four point four. Running out of time. Minute and a half left to go. As uh, Colin Matiak here has uh, been the class of the field here tonight. Just a little bit of a hiccup earlier. But ha he was able to recover there pretty well. And uh, he has got a... Uh, he's got about a little under a minute left. So, you know, this is going to be the last uh, lap. Dan Richter here having some late l race trouble. Coming off track there just a little bit. Uh, that's sort of a good news, bad news thing there. You do do little uh, lose a little time there, but at least you do not spin that car out. Jack G giving him a little bit of room there to go. Running in fifth as uh, Colin Matiak opening up that lead on Nikolai Bezhrikov. So just a few turns left to go for Colin Matiak here in the Corvette. He's flashing those lights. So coming around the last turn here, our race winner is going to be this 13 car of Colin Matiak. So Colin getting that win. Bezhrikov finishing in second. So congratulations to uh, Colin on getting that win. So uh, good news for him. That uh, helps him with that points championship. Two wins in a row, huh? Gets the win uh, last night in the uh, stock cars at Nashville and then comes back to uh, Ohio and uh, mid-Ohio and gets that win. So congratulations to him. Bezhrikov uh, finishing in the second position. Vandeven finishing in third. Paul Brown fourth. Actually, Paul Brown is uh, out of fuel, uh, he says. So he's trying to coast back across the uh, finish line. It does look like he's going to finish in the fourth position. So uh, Colin Matiak is going to win this race. So congratulations to him. Bezhrikov second, Vandeven third. What a good bounce back there for uh, Dennis Vandeven too, by the way, as uh, he got, it climbs back up to the third position. Paul Brown finishes in fourth. Jack G, another one of those guys that bounced back. Congratulations to him finishing the fifth position. Artem Shule have had a battle all night long, and uh, he is in the si finishes in sixth. Ernan Geo finishes seventh. Dan Richter eighth. Alexander Meshkov ninth. David Kerr finished in the tenth position.
So we'll take a look at the final results here before we get the uh, the banner up. Let's start off with the first page here. Here you go. Colin Matiak wins this race. Nikolai Bedrikov second. Dennis Vandevin third. Paul Brown fourth. Rounding out the top five is Jack G. Artem Shuliev finishes in the sixth position. Ernan Geo seventh. Dan Richter finishes in the eighth position. Alexander Meshkov finishes in ninth. David Kerr finishes in the tenth position. In the eleventh spot is Will Dunbar. John Stanley finishes in twelfth. And Adder Pontes having some uh, troubles there with his wheel finishes in thirteenth. We'll move this over here just a little bit. So we'll see if we can't get uh, Colin up here again. Man, he might have just stayed up. He should have just stayed up here from last night. Just got his sleeping bag and just stayed up in victory lane. So again, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can't get uh, Colin up here in the booth. All right, Colin Matiak here, the twofer, man. You win last night, and you come back and uh, show him up here in the uh, GT3 race, and I have a feeling that you really like this track. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Oh, I had it muted. No. Uh, yeah, this is my favorite track. It's a home track, so it feels good uh, to drive it, and especially in these cars with a lot of grip I'm going through the middle sector. It's just nice to throw it all together. So what was the plan with the tires? Did you uh, did you stay on soft tires all night, or uh, you know, did you switch that up to mediums or, or switch back from mediums? What, what was the plan there? Um, the original plan was to start on mediums, but uh, I realized that they just they had no pace in them, and the car did not feel great on them, so I did soft to soft for the whole race. Um, and it was a bit better in the second half because I – overextended the first stint so the second stint was a bit shorter so the tires fared a bit better it really looked like he only had i think one hiccup major hiccup in the race there where he got off track a little bit uh and you know, i'm sure like with any road course racing you know you're going to miss a turn or two but uh, you seem to be you know spot on here and lap traffic really wasn't an issue for you no that little hiccup it was kind of confusing um the car didn't do that at all in practice or in uh the rest of the race thankfully um so it was just kind of odd and it caught me out but yeah no problems with lap traffic so that was nice well this win definitely uh gives you a a shot in your arm here for the championship run uh next week you got salzburg ring i don't know if you've been on that track if you have what's your thoughts on that one um i did a bit of testing in the aston martin and um it's it's interesting it's a really short track um, or simple track uh, and it's it's fun but it's it's going to be hard to uh, overtake there I think uh, not many passing opportunities well you know you got your biggest fans uh, supporting your sim racing effort mom and dad and uh, talk a little bit about uh, what they've meant to you and, and helping you with uh, this uh, effort to uh, to do sim racing and, and supporting you um I, I, they've just been there since the beginning. They questioned it when I wanted my first wheel, but after I showed them that I could actually do this and there was kind of some sort of competitive thing for it, uh, they started supporting it more and more, and they've just been there ever since supporting it. And it's it's nice for them to go out and watch the races because it does mean a lot to me. You know, it doesn't... Uh... I think it goes without saying, at least in my experience in sim racing, is that you really don't see a lot of young uh, folks uh, doing sim racing. They're more maybe playing Fortnite or whatever. Yeah. Uh, 
So, uh, you know, you get out here and you're racing with these old guys. And, uh, you know, I tell you, the old guys seem like they can drive pretty well, huh? Yeah. I mean, first, uh, what, three seasons of the Bushwhacker series, Paul giving everybody a run for their money. Um, and, I mean, everybody else was within a tenth of each other. And so it's it's very, very close racing here. It's, well, how do you make the transition? You know, one night you're racing in uh, stock cars at an oval, and then the next night you're coming out here and uh, racing GT3 cars in uh, at a pretty challenging, very technical road course. It's it's just practice between both. Um, I've always done road racing, and this is like the first year I've touched oval racing. So it's it's more of a transition from road courses to the oval that's the problem. But um, it's pretty easy to kind of like switch your mindset from the different styles of racing so it's not too difficult but it is different well i gotta wonder are you trying to recruit any classmates to come out and start joining you running as well um i've tried like to just get someone to uh try it or something but no no takers yet sadly <laughs> yeah all right, man. Well, hey, congratulations on another win, and uh, I suspect we're going to see some more this season, not only in uh, in the Bushwhacker series, but also this uh, GT3 series. Uh, so congratulations. Good luck to you the rest of the season and next week at Salzburg Ring. Thank you. All right, that's Colin Matiak here back up in the booth here. Man, I, like I said, he just should have had a sleeping bag up here, man. You know, he's uh, up in the booth last night, comes back up in the booth tonight. Why even, you know, you should just uh, – Bring your Gatorade and uh, your sleeping bag and your uh, your jammies and just hang out in the booth, man. <laughs> uh, hey, congratulations to him. And uh, he was talking a little bit about how important his mom and dad have been and, and uh, supporting him. You know, that kind of question, you know, certainly with the expense of uh, sim racing, uh, I kind of question that. But now, you know, honestly, I think most people from the outside looking in do not really realize how uh, involved sim racing is and uh, really... Uh, how competitive it is, and you see these uh, legit, uh, I shouldn't say legit, the, the folks that are going out and racing it for real, they're, they're doing sim racing uh, to prepare for these tracks uh, that they face. That is not uncommon, man. And I would say this, that I would put up uh, you know, a guy like Colin Matiak up against any one of the professional drivers out here in this sim racing. i put them head to head, and I, my money would be on Colin, for example. You know, no, no different than some of these other guys, too, like Paul Brown. Uh, Ed Palumbo, uh, Dennis Vandevin, those guys, uh, you know, um, you know Thomas Golom, uh, guys that I know that, uh, you know, they are, uh, you know, at the top of the game there. Paul Holt, I got to mention him. He was in the chat there a little bit ago uh, as well. Those guys at the top of the game, man. Uh, and Luis, uh, Luis Moreno, too, man. I had a chance to uh, run with him a little bit in that uh, race of champions thing that they did uh, last weekend. And, uh, you know, that guy does all kinds of sim racing all over uh, the uh, Asian theater and also a lot of European uh, leagues, too. He's from the Philippines. And uh, that guy is uh, pretty darn famous there as a sim racer. Uh, so anyway, hey, congratulations to Kyle Maniak. I'll quit rambling on. And again, we got Salzburg Ring coming up next week, and that, that is going to be a fun, fun track. I really, when I got on that track for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to put this on the schedule. So uh, we were out doing some testing, some guys that have never been on it before, and they fell in love with it. They really like this track. Uh, so that's coming up next week, Salzburg Ring here in the GT3 Series. Don't forget, on Friday of next week, we'll be at Bristol. You talk about some beating and banging, some paint swapping. It is going to be a fun, fun race. Always is. You're going to see a big field at Bristol. Uh, it's race number seven in the 2020 winter season in the High Octane Racing League Bushwhacker Series. And excited about this one. I think uh, a lot of guys really like to come out and race Bristol. And uh, listen, not a lot of room for air here, man. Uh, you know, you, you're going to leave the door open from somebody. They're going to slip that car through, and you're definitely going to see some guys swapping paint at this track. So uh, with the Bushwhacker Series is a fantastic oval course. Uh, series and uh, stock car series, so you uh, you want definitely want to check that out uh, coming up uh, next week right here live on Turn Left TV. Well, we had flawless server here tonight, that's for sure. And that's a uh, perfect for R Factor Two. That is EliteHostingUSA.com. If you're interested in a server package, self-managed R Factor Two server, please give EliteHosting.com, EliteHostingUSA.com a look. Uh, Will Dunbar does that, uh, uh, runs our servers and hosts these servers, and uh, he does a great job. He's got a, uh, 
senior software engineer and uh, knows all about this type of stuff. And uh, he will uh, get you a uh, server package that will suit your needs. So please give EliteHostingUSA.com a look and uh, tell them Turn Left TV sent you. Thank you so much for coming out and joining me here on Turn Left TV. My gosh, man. I always enjoy people coming out and watching the races. Uh, but uh, honored that you would come here to watch uh, your races, uh, your get your race, sim racing fix. Let's just put it that way. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I encourage you to do so. Share my videos with any of your friends on any social media platform where you can share YouTube videos. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and then please donate. If you'd like to make a donation, you can click on the link up in the banner of the channel and make a donation straight through PayPal. Been a lot of fun here. I love doing this, man. And I'm really surprised anybody would come out and watch my races. To be honest with you, I'm still in awe uh, that people will come out and do that. Not a very good DJ while I do the broadcast. Anyway, I cut the songs off. Take a look at that uh, Bushwhacker schedule coming up. Uh, of course, the Mo uh, Bristol next week, 150 laps. We're going to be off for Christmas, and we're going to hit it again, man. Uh, Talladega Super Speedway on January the 1st when everybody's recovering. Maybe uh, those guys that don't want to watch football that day uh, will be uh, racing at Talladega Super Speedway. Don't forget to join us on Turn Left TV. Then we got Texas Motor Speedway, Palm Springs. Similar but different, similar in length, but uh, d obviously different in configuration with those two tracks. I've been excited about those two tracks headed our way as well. Take a look at the schedule here. Next week, Salzburg Ring, Watkins Glen. Following that on 26 December, Baku City on January the 2nd, Olton Park, January the 9th, Riverside on the 19th of January, and then Daytona Road Course on January the 23rd. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight here on High Octane Racing League's premier broadcast channel, and that is Turn Left TV. Thank you so much for joining us, and as always, I am out of here.